Hi there, let's talk about shortly AI commands. In particular, this collection that I'm calling the refine collection. And you're gonna wanna know these commands just to kind of give you a little bit more, I like to call it writing superpowers when you're using shortly AI because these are the kinds of things that once you kind of begin to master these, they give you the ability to kind of really quickly flow through creating long, uh, long form content. And um, I apologize. In some ways, this uh, this guide is a little bit late. Um, shortly did release these probably two or three weeks ago now. Uh, they don't specifically call it the refined collection, but that's what I call it just because, you know, I wanted to kind of put a label to it and, you know, kind of make it make sense in some way because these these three slash commands that they're called they all kind of do something around tweaking uh, sentences to kind of either give you more content or rewrite the content and things like that so in other words to refine your content so you're gonna want to know how to use these commands what they are and then uh, I'll show them in action as well so first I always pro I mean I probably always go through something like this in almost every video I talk about context it's one of the most vital things for you to understand when you're writing shortly so please 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 watch any of the context videos that I've, I've linked to within this article and and anytime I do link to them if you don't fully understand context when you're writing with shortly make sure you check them out they'll get you up to speed and you'll be making the most of shortly in no time so context in particular in the slash commands so I do have a lot more in-depth uh, guide or video that I'll I'll make sure is linked up to here before I publish this um, but for this particular video I'm referring to the context that you're gonna find within the slash commands themselves so when you're using a slash command you're gonna notice that there's some square brackets you'll do slash like let's say for example slash explore space square bracket inside of that square bracket is what you want in this case I said slash expand so it would be what you want to have expanded upon and when you're using shortly normally context is kind of whatever is before the cursor and inside of your article brief or in the title but when you're using a slash command the only thing that is used in context is whatever's in that square bracket so you can ignore everything else on your on your article and purely focus on whatever's in your in those square brackets and the AI is going to use that to create content for you. And that means that you can use that to your advantage when you're in the middle of a long article and you just want to get a little bit more content kind of right there but you don't want everything around it kind of getting in the way. Sometimes these commands can rescue you. So, what are those commands? Um, like I said, I call them the refine collection because in in most, I guess in, in a way, that's kind of really what they're doing to the content. So they're shorten, rewrite, and expand. And these do pretty much exactly what you would imagine when you hear the word. Slash shorten will shorten the text in an attempt to kind of rewrite it in a more concise way. It's kind of useful when, you know, one of the things you might notice when you're using AI is that sometimes the sentences can get a little little fluffy you know kind of wordy they use a lot of words to kind of say something that could probably be said in some in, in, in many fewer words i guess and so that's what shorten will do is it's going to condense the sentence down to something more concise and uh, that can be helpful in the middle of an article and you don't want it to be so wordy and then you have rewrite Rewrite almost doesn't need any expl explanation, does it? Um, all it takes is the sentence or whatever it is that you've put into it, and it rewrites it in another way. So sometimes you might use it if maybe the sentence is kind of, it's good, but it's maybe just a little bit awkward. You know, some of the words that are used maybe don't quite fit with the flow or your voice or, you know, things like that. If it just, for whatever reason to you, doesn't quite fit, then you can use rewrite to kind of rewrite it a little bit and maybe produce something better for you. 
So the star of the show, though, is expand. This is the one that will take some of the text that you feed it and expand upon it, giving you more content about the topic that you fed it. And it's kind of well, like a, a, way, a way to add some meat to a paragraph, I say, you know, without you know, with the context control, right? Where you can kind of do that right in the middle of a paragraph or anything. And you you don't have to worry about that stuff that's around it getting in the way so you can just get very specific content when you need it. So those are the, the commands in a nutshell. Let me go ahead and switch over into shortly here and just kind of show it off a little bit. So I don't know if you remember from the last video, if you happen to have seen it, where I was basically using an article about ramen in Tokyo. I use Tokyo a lot because I, I live here. I've lived in to Tokyo for 24 years. I'm originally from Iowa. And yes, I never would have imagined I would live in Tokyo when I was just an Iowa boy back home. But anyway, here I started an article just so we could get up to speed here real quick. And I want to show you some of these commands in action. Now, first, I want to show you down here, if you look at this little like page thing here, when you click on that, it's going to show you the command cheat sheet. And you're going to want to notice or pay attention to right here where it has max characters. So what happened was, because <laughs> I've been beta testing all these things for a while, right before they were released, OpenAI felt that these commands were too powerful to be kind of wide open and allowed to do any number of characters. And it's probably true. Um, you know, OpenAI is very careful to try and make sure that uh, these tools like Shortly or Niches or Conversion AI or Copy AI and Headline, they aren't producing like scalable automated ways of generating tons of content that are just like synthetic articles basically. So they introduced limits. And so there's a certain number of characters that you can perform, you can perform these actions on. And for the most part, you're probably going to be fine. One of the things that kind of broke my heart a little bit was Shorten. Shorten didn't have a net max 200 characters. And you can imagine where you could do almost kind of summaries, which is actually the reason why they didn't want it, because they don't want OpenAI being used to, to perform, you know, automated summaries of things. So in the original, you could take this, shorten it, and it would make some nice, concise couple of paragraphs out of it, kind of summarizing the paragraph. And so they didn't like that. So now, what is it, 160 or 200 characters for short, for shorten? And, uh, well, it is what it is, I guess. But uh, let's just say, for instance, the ramen industry in Japan has been growing rapidly for decades and is now a multi-billion yen food industry with an industrial presence. Let's shorten that. Uh, one more thing about the commands, too, is, is you can highlight the content that you want, the text that you want to perform the actions on, and then you can use keyboard commands, the keyboard shortcuts. And that's what I like to do. Once you get used to it, it really helps you move quickly. So uh, command, I'm on a Mac. So command backspace or back square bracket will perform shorten. Right square bracket will perform expand and P will uh, perform rewrite. So you just highlight what you want to do. Command left bracket. You can see shorten kind of kicks in there. It's going to start doing it. There we go. Now, ramen industry in Japan is a multi-billion food industry. Yep, sure is. Could I have edited it myself that way? For sure. But this was the result this time. You can always uh, undo and redo anytime you want. Those do affect, like if you did the slash command like this, you can redo just a slash command as well. It doesn't. It's not only reserved for the write for me button. Okay, so that's shorten. What if we want to rewrite something? Like, let's just say that, okay, it's com they're vying for competition and stuff like that. Let's just, let's let it rewrite. Okay, good. I wanted to show what happens when you go over the limit. So what happens is that shortly kind of takes advantage of uh, some, some nice JavaScript to automatically select the text that's beyond, uh, what was it, 120, no, uh, rewrite is 160 that was beyond the 160 characters. And I need to do it again because, there we go. So with it highlighted, you can just backspace to delete it, come over here to the end of the square bracket and hit right for me. That's the thing too about the slash commands is when 
when you want to trigger it, basically, here's the start of the command, everything in the command, and then the square bracket. Make sure your cursor is at the end of that square bracket, and then you hit write for me, it performs rewrite. If you were to put a space there, write for me would just do regular old write for me. So be careful. Make sure it's right at the edge of the square bracket. Hit write for me, and it's going to perform the rewrite. Okay, so that's a rewritten sentence. It's a little short. I'm, let's just see what happens when you rewrite it again. Okay, that's a little bit better. And you can notice, too, that it didn't actually finish the its thought, basically. Like, it just stopped kind of in the middle. That's another open AI limitation. They don't want automatic tons of generation of content, basically. But the nice thing is, is you're in shortly. You can just use write for me now, and it'll keep on finishing its thought. And you notice right here, I caught into a pattern. So you want to be careful with patterns. I do have a video that I'm... Actually, I've recorded it. It should be uploaded by the time you're watching this. And it goes over being aware of patterns and how to break out of them. For now, we're not talking about patterns in this video, so let's just continue on. Um, let's skip over this this section of the outline. Let's go down to the reasons why ramen is so popular. Let's just copy this, and I'm going to show the expand command. So I'm going to paste it in there, highlight it, square bracket, uh, right square bracket, and this is what we get. Look at that. So now it sounds like it's trying to go into a, a, a flow of writing about something. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that this stuff up here is not affecting the content here. I want it to finish this thought only, and I don't want anything else getting in the way except for the article brief and the title. So let's break that, put the triple slash here, that means that when it tries to, when I just click here and do write for me, it's only going to use this context and whatever's in the article brief right here and the ramen in Tokyo title. So it should finish its thought without kicking into a pattern. The way this shortly works is that the content that is below it, can I zoom in anymore? Nope. The content that is below this paragraph isn't counted. It goes from the bottom up, wherever your cursor is up. But since there's a triple slash here, it gets cut to stop here. So let's see what happens. It's probably going to break into its own pattern. It sounds like it wants to kind of start something. Nope. Okay. So we get a little bit more, you know, kind of a little bit of a history almost and a little bit more information about why it's popular. Um, you, and so now you can see that when you start getting into the rhythm of things, you know, you can, you can kind of really start working fast, like expand upon the important facts about ramen, Ramen's traditional soup. Yep. Okay. It's very cool. Um, looks like it wants to finish its thought. Let's see what happens, even though we've got some pattern and some other things. I didn't break break it here with context. Okay. Okay. Very good. So, um, you know, what you're going to want to also do is actually lead the AI. You don't want the AI to do all of your writing. The way I'm showing you right now, the AI is doing a very significant chunk, but you're going to want to not take it as is you're going to want to kind of mold it and shape it into your voice so it's it's a good first draft in many ways but you're also going to want to spend some time to actually kind of lead it a little bit so gpt3 is a unidirectional predictive text algorithm so it really likes to take a passage and add more to it that it thinks that you expected that's what it was designed to do and also in, a, in fill in words that may be missing in a sentence by the way but that's harder to do um, in a tool like this. So in, in something like shortly, what you kind of want to think of it as is almost like autocomplete for your thoughts or autocomplete for your sentences and paragraphs instead of just autocompleting a single word. That's what GPT-3 is good at and likes to do. So, so one of the ways of, of working with it is just to kind of lead it a little bit. So let's go like, like many people believe that ramen was, and then let's... Uh, yeah, let's just start there. Ramen was, and we'll let GPT-3, you know, finish that thought for us. You can imagine, uh, and there we go, and of course it was, but in Japan, ramen is a common dish prepared available at restaurants, at home or at restaurants. Yep, it sure is. Um, but let's see what happens if we just, we like the first half of the sentence, for example. Let's see, a common dish prepared. Uh, and let's just see what, like we don't want it at home or businesses. Let's see what, what else it, it can come up with for us prepared at home okay so you might end up kind of 
you know, dancing with the AI a little bit and kind of getting to a point where sometimes the content surprises you. Sometimes you want to redo the content. Sometimes you'll take that content and mold it more to yourself, to your voice, you know, something that fits better with the topic that you're writing about and just go with the flow with AI. And eventually you end up in a, in a, um, almost like a, like I said at the beginning, writing superpowers, you get to the point where you're just dancing with AI and you're just producing content super fast. Um, this is probably, I don't know, 300 words, 400 words or something. Yeah. 300 words. Um, but I didn't really do anything yet. I haven't really just started pushing forward and trying to produce a ton of content. It should be pretty easy with, uh, what did I have? Five, five, uh, parts of my outline should be able to pretty quickly generate more content, write some of my own dance with the AI to produce more paragraphs. This would be a list of the top 10 ramen, you know, and just keep going and just produce something awesome with these refined commands that are inside of shortly. So I hope that you found this video helpful and find maybe some new ways that you can use shortly in your, your workflow and your content creation process and give you the writing superpowers that you need to outproduce your competition, win more Google SERPs so you can have some more traffic, earn more money and just be successful online. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Please like, share and subscribe, all that fun stuff. And until next time, take care.